Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Ian's Display Accessories. The best figure stands for modern and vintage G.I. Joe's, Star Wars, and TGC Customs. Replace the lame stock accessories with 6 inch scale versions of iconic 3 and 3 quarter inch weapons. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Codename New 2 2 Hi, I'm your presenter, Shabu Aryu. I decided for this episode, let's take a look at another classified figure. And this one is kindly interesting. Today we're going to look at the new Target exclusive of Tiger Force Rakondo. Now, I'm going to start off with the right off the bat in a big way. Rakondo is highly regarded but it, he's always like the best supporting actor that will never be a lead. Think about that. A lot of people have high ratings on the character, on the figure itself. But he never has that leading role type of um, persona where, you know, you don't see him being a, the, the favorite character for a lot of people. But at the same time, everyone seems to like him. He's like the Lieutenant Dan of the G.I. Joe Classify, or the G.I. Joe um, Mythos, in my opinion. Um, I like the figure. I know a lot of our friends, HCC788, um, G.I. Joe Berg, Half the Battle. So many people have nothing but wonderful things to say about Rakondo and his version 1 action figure. But the fact of the matter is, he never gets that... Eh, it's always like, you know, yeah, he's good, but he never gets that leading role type of uh, treatment that uh, such other figures like maybe Duke or um, Snake Eyes, obviously, uh, Storm Shadow. So he never gets the top billing. Anyway, let's take a look at this one. Alrighty, so let's start with the box first. And... Um, Right off the bat, uh, I actually like this box. You know what? It gives me the whole Apocalypse Now vibe. I mean, that's what I got when I look at this box. Obviously, um, you know, I'm pulling up the movie picture here on the side. But again, uh, it's the old style because we all know that they're since Hasbro has since stopped using the window. But again, these uh, Python Patrol and Tiger Force are still incorporating that. And yeah, I really like this the side art on this one. I think it's really nicely done. Issued in 1984, a lot of people forget that Rakondo came out in that all-star year. I mean, between 1984 and 1985, just imagine being on the toy aisle in 1985. You got Snake Eyes version 2, Duke, Ripcord, Lady J, Footloose. I mean, so many... Just imagine that in retrospective. That was have been insane. Now, the other thing is he is the designated jungle specialist. And his original prototype name was Bonnie Rat. Now, <laughs> let's give him something to talk about. Well, <laughs> we're talking about Rakondo here. And his action figure is simply amazing. Of course, we all know that Rakondo is a school of... Uh, of like long range patrol reconnaissance so he could have been in the llrp with the snake eyes storm shadow and stalker but um the under funny thing is he's not australian a lot of people think he's of australian descent but he was born in my birth state of wisconsin so the furthest thing from australia and i know what you're asking how the hell did Indian people end up in Wisconsin. I don't have the answer to that, folks. I don't know. But somehow I was born in uh, Wisconsin and same thing in Wakanda over here. His first appearance in the comics is the famous issue number 32. I had talked about this around 2020, how because of that Amazon Prime about Lady J, this issue spiked up through the roof. I mean, raw copies were going for over $50. But you see... I just have a newsstand version of that. One of the ugliest covers in G.I. Joe, by the way, with that ugly-ass yellow and um, 
Zartan on the bike. But this issue is actually interesting because uh, there's so many crazy, this is a crazy ass issue. And you could see first appearance of Ricondo, uh, Lady J and Blowtorch. And there we see Ricondo in the background. And this issue is funny because you see a little cat fight going on between Lady J and Scarlet. And, uh, you know, just that's not cool. I mean, it was just a typical thing. Hey, two strong women, they have to be at odds. So that kind of is outdated nowadays. What I like is they kind of gave Lady J a more of the uh, Sunbow cartoon type of thing. Oh, yeah, and I forgot of this crazy ass story of a bear chasing Firefly and uh, Destro. So <laughs> all under the command of uh, Spirit. So that's another funny thing. And then there's one more crazy ass thing. And on top of it off, you have Major Blood and the Baroness teaching a child, Billy, to kill somebody. And look, you see the Baroness consoling Billy like, oh, you'll do a good job. You'll do a good job shooting your dad in the face. <laughs> what a crazy ass issue. Alrighty, so now let's move on to look at the version one of Rakondo. Even though the classified as a tiger force, you know, I'm kind of gearing this more to the character than the actual figure. But, you know, um, again, one of the figures that is beloved all across the board everybody loves this figure i mean it's more grounded military realistic type of thing no sci-fi aliens or any of that nonsense i mean this is the bread and butter of gi joe this is what gi joe is all about and you see mine looks like it has a shiner on it so i like that it adds a little bit of character to this and uh the other thing is because he's the a uh, jungle specialist he was you know, before there was Gung Ho, even though he was a Marine, but his specialty was jungle warfare. So I would actually put Gung Ho as the first jungle person. And then after that, you had Muskrat, even though it's swamp, jungle, same difference. But I'm going to put uh, Muskrat in that tier as well. So after Rakondo, I would put in Muskrat and then Pathfinder. Pathfinder, you know... Um, he had that weed whacker, but, but um, I included him with the a grenade launcher, you know, M16 grenade launcher. I think that looks really good on him. So this is what I think is the jungle uh, swamp personnel that um, encompasses G.I. Joe. So that's a nice bunch of uh, power characters there. And of course, being a 1984 character, he had a significant screen time in the Sunbow series, uh, probably featured in the episode Jungle Trap, where he's actually going through the jungles of India. So that's pretty cool. And saving a uh, scientist who had the ability to control lava. Um, and uh, man, was he amazing in that episode. You really saw what again Rikondo, a strong the element he role, adds to the team um, just like in, in the episode. comics and everything else he actually saved snake eyes in that episode uh, so even the great snake eyes got a help from Rakondo in that episode so the next up will be his appearances in the idw comic books and again uh Rikondo has always been a background character few times few episodes they're in the jungle and we have muskrat or Rikondo. On there and we see him and I think this is issue 197 if I remember correctly but um, if, you know and then we go to his 25th anniversary line I was not impressed with this figure I think it um, didn't do the uh, version 1 credit or any justice so here we go we're gonna take a look and finally open Tiger Force Rakondo so this thing here Make sure I don't slip my wrists. And now we have everything out. The accessories are all out. And, um, you know, the whole thing about Australian hat, it's called, actually called a slouch hat. So that's the correct terminology for that particular style of hat. And then we have his backpack. And then his rifle, which is classified as an M14 with a custom stock and molded bipod. Of course, his Bowie knife and his handgun. Then I kind of brought out his uh, original accessories. 
I like how the cantina is played, you know, exactly the same way. And of course, his M14 rifle side by side with the one another. Uh, they did a great job with this figure. I think, you know, from the original early releases of classifies to now. And now look at his hairstyle. I kind of like that. It's a little bit longer. You have the uh, bicycle mustache in there, but I just like that hairstyle that he has. I think they did a good job with that. That's something that may be overlooked, but I took notice, and I kind of like that a lot. And now, finally, him all together. That looks nice. That is a nice figure. I'm really impressed with this Tiger Force line. I think they really did a good job and knocked these out of the park. Um, it's just... A great homage to the original Tiger Force. Unfortunately, that's one of the Tiger Force figures I do not have in my crazy collection. So I cannot uh, compare that with the with this figure. But here we go. We have the uh, version one with the classified. And it's a nice, good homage to that figure. And I think, again... I can't rave enough about it. It's just one of those. It's just beautiful. That black shirt. I mean, this is something you could see in real life. This is something that makes sense and practical, especially in a jungle environment. And of course, here's the entire Tiger Force team. And that's a good looking bunch right there. I mean, it's just funny because initially I was going to pass on all of these, but I end up being really lucky and, and grateful that I ended up picking these up because they look amazing together. And the cool thing with Ricondo is you can match them up with other figures, like I said. You could team them up with, uh, you know, even with Stalker, Flynn, Gung Ho. He just makes sense in several different play scenarios or display scenarios. So that's what makes this figure really, really attractive. The black shirt, the simplicity, the camouflage, it just makes sense. Oh, and I forgot to mention that in the version one of his uh, figure, he actually has uh, three different camouflage patterns. So I guess I'll leave you with that bit. And I think Rakondo is a home run, guys. I think this is a great figure and um, something that if you could definitely add it to your collection. This is Shibu R.U. signing off.